to the unit, Introduction to History of Indian and Western Costume. This unit traces the origins of costumes and the way that they evolved through different periods of time across the world. By the end of this unit, students will be able to understand the premises of costume development, identify the sources of reference and archaeological finds that help shape our understanding of costume development. Explain the evolution of costume in relationship to the evolution of material culture, technology, socio-cultural beliefs, politics, economics and environment. The first section traces the different stages of human evolution and the challenges that humans faced as they migrated to different parts of the world. Let us begin by reviewing the different stages of human evolution. Prehistoric man evolved over a period of 7 million years. The earliest stages of human evolution began in Africa as a population of African apes that evolved into three different species, gorillas, chimpanzees and humans. Early humans stood nearly upright and had developed larger brains, about half the size of the modern human brain. The first known human subspecies to make clothing, the Neanderthal man, survived during this period. It appears that these proto-humans, as early humans are known, began to use crude tools. Early humans began to migrate out of Africa and into other parts of the world in a process that appears to have been completed around 10,000 BCE. Humans spread throughout the world, populating most of the major landmasses of the earth. Here is the prehistoric chronology of humans. Humans living at this time were hunter-gatherers. They hunted reindeer and mammoths. Humans became advanced hunters and began fishing. They began to use animal fur and skin for protection. Humans began to breed and domesticate animals, grow their own food, cultivate flax for linen, make leather garments and develop weaving techniques. Humans started trade and seafare. Craftsmen developed various artistic skills and cultivated aesthetics. The sewn garment was now being used extensively. It was beautified by embroidery and ornamentations. Around 4 million years ago, the direct ancestors of modern humans appeared in Central Africa. This species had no natural defenses such as fangs, protective scales, fur, exceptional strength or speed. However, they did have a comparative advantage for survival. They walked on two feet while leaving their hands free to gather food and they had comparatively larger brains. These characteristics enabled early humans to think, plan, create tools and coordinate with each other for efficient hunting. They also made weapons to defend themselves against predators and other groups of people competing for human territories. Early humans migrated out of Africa around 1.8 million years ago. Over many generations, they developed physical variations due to their geographical and climatic environment. These early people lived in small-scale communities in and around caves. Gradually, they developed localized cultures, advanced hunting techniques and better understanding of where to find ripe fruits and vegetables throughout the year. The primary source of evidence and information comes from archaeologists and anthropologists. Their studies have been primarily used to interpret historical evidence. Archaeology studies historical human cultures through the recovery, documentation, analysis and interpretation of material culture and environmental data, including architecture, artifacts, biofacts and landscapes. It aims to understand humankind. Anthropology is the holistic global comparative study of humans and their interactions with each other and the environment. Dyed flax fibers that could have been used in clothing have been found in a prehistoric cave in the Republic of Georgia 
that dates back to 36,000 BC. Anthropologists have conducted a genetic analysis of human body lice that suggests clothing originated around 107,000 years ago. Body lice is an indicator of clothes wearing since most humans have sparse body hair and lice thus requires human clothing to survive. A steady supply of food resources resulted in more leisure time and these early humans used their tool making skills for artistic expression. Paintings discovered in caves dating to 35,000 years ago reveal sophisticated conceptual and rendering skills in depicting animals and elements of their environment. Figurines of humans and animals were carved in a highly realistic style. Tools and utilitarian objects were also engraved with decorative elements. These artistic expressions may have been made for aesthetic pleasure or as part of a spiritual or magical belief. The Venus figurine found at Neolithic sites illustrates the symbol of fertility through the figure of a voluptuous woman. Similar artifacts have been found at various locations across southern Europe, indicating a kind of cultural exchange system that was prevalent. A prominent use for ornamental items was for burial of the dead. Excavations of grave sites dating back to 40,000 years ago have revealed weapons, tools, clothing, bodies covered in paint and even food. These shed light on the concept of afterlife for early human societies. With the retreat of the Ice Age around 12,000 years ago, migratory patterns of food animals also changed making it difficult for hunting. This led to people maintaining captive herds of animals as a ready supply of food. Additionally, people began to settle in areas where they could cultivate plants for food. The domestication of animals and development of agriculture transformed the uncertain lives of early humans, hunter-gatherer communities, providing a more stable and controlled way of life. These early agrarian societies developed along the banks of major rivers such as the Tigris and Euphrates in Western Asia, the Indus in Central Asia and the Nile in North Africa around 10,000 years ago. The advances in technology, architecture and social integration were rapid and dramatic. This section explains why humans began using clothing and the subsequent development of costumes. There is limited knowledge about the earliest human costume due to the scarcity of archaeological finds. Stone tools found at sites for scraping animal hides, bone needles and antler awls give us hints that animal skins were sewed and used to make clothes, blankets, coverings or other utilitarian items. Evidence of this comes from archaeological discoveries of needles found for sewing bone scrapers used for preparing skins and bone devices probably used for fastening clothing in sites dating from the same general period. Yet very little of these items have survived for us to understand how exactly they looked like. The earliest depiction of dresses are found in cave paintings from the old stone age or early paleolithical period about 30,000 years ago. Earliest evidence of textile fabrics date from about 27,000 years ago, imprints of woven material on clay pots. The oldest textile discovered dates to about 7,000 BC. Evidence dating back to 30,000 years ago confirms that people have transformed their appearance of their bodies in a wide variety of ways. In addition to skins, needles and awls, Ornaments like stone beads, pierced shells, drilled animal teeth and fish vertebrae suggest ring ornaments like necklaces, bracelets, anklets and girdles or even beadwork stitched on clothing. Early graves also suggest that prehistoric humans also painted their bodies in striking hues of yellow or red ochre. 
Archaeologists have identified very early sewing needles of bone and ivory from about 30,000 BC, found near Kostensky, Russia in 1988. The earliest evidence of weaving comes from impressions of textile basketry and nets on little pieces of hard clay, dating from 27,000 years and found in Dolny Vestonis in the Czech Republic. These adornments suggest that the motivation for clothing was not limited to the need for physical protection from climatic elements. Costumes were developed for primarily four reasons, for protection, decoration, denoting status and for modesty. Early humans used clothing for a number of reasons. The most important reason for clothing was for protection against the elements like cold, rain, snow and sun. However, early humans first emerged in the warm equatorial climates of Africa thousands of years before migrating to colder climates. The second kind of clothing was for protection against injury. It was necessary to cover the genitals while running through the underbrush, climbing trees or while engaging in other perilous activities. Wearing fringed or dangling items would also, by this sweeping motion, help fend off insects and flies. Covering the body in mud packs and body paints may have been used to protect against insect bites and stings. The third form of protection was against the supernatural. Images and ornaments are still worn today to ward off evil. It is believed that early motivation for costumes may have been to give the wearer special strengths through belief in the supernatural. Clothing for decoration is thought to be the primary reason for the development of human costume. Even when we look at primitive cultures in existence today, where clothing is not worn, there is no culture in which some form of body decoration does not exist. This awareness of self and interest in body decoration is believed to be a basic human trait. For example, the garishments worn by Rococo society ladies included towering hair arrangements and 50-inch wide cake gowns made with 50 pounds of fabric, supports, swags, rosettes, bows and other trimmings. Similarly, the Japanese counterpart of French noblewomen decorated themselves in 12 layers of kimono with enormous sleeves and trains that, along with accessories and makeup, symbolized types of flowers or seasonal foliage. Dress as a symbol of status arguably developed at a later phase. Conveying status through dress can be so complex and subtle that to recognize its meaning usually requires special training from the earliest age within a society. Among the single or combination of status that a dress may communicate include gender, age, religion, nationality, ethnic group, profession, trade skills, military rank, social status, economic status, marital status, marital condition, family connection, and political or sports affiliation. One of the most ancient forms of a status dress is clothing reserved for those of special rank, hieratic privilege or economic significance. At various times in history, certain types of apparel, accessories, fabrics, trimmings, dyes and various other luxury goods were reserved for the exclusive use of the elite. These restrictions were often codified into sumptuary laws, which by design were enacted to keep society visibly stratified. Even within the ranking classes, sumptuary restrictions were established to denote status. For example, the rare and precious murex purple was lavishly used as a dye for the clothing of the Roman imperial family. But the use of the color was restricted to only border edging for the togas of senators. In assessing modesty as a purpose for the development of historic dress, researchers must guard against imposing their own ideas of modesty into the analysis. 
the part of the body that may be freely and openly exposed or enhanced by a dress in one society may be viewed as immodest in another. The notion of modesty and emotion of shame at exposing a particular part of the body varies from culture to culture and from era to era. Ancient Athenian women disparaged their Spartan sisters as hip displayers for wearing a type of peplos that was open at the side. Yet the full nudity of the young Greek male in public was regarded as a holy offering to the divine, according to Herodotus. Clothes had various purposes. They were used for ceremonial purposes. Affluent people had servants to do most of their manual work and so were able to wear more elaborate costumes. Clothes were also used by laborers and manual workers, hunters, soldiers and the military. Clothes, however, have a number of limitations. The main limitation of clothes are skin drapes differently than fabric. The qualities of different woven materials such as cotton, linen, silk and backcloth differ. Areas that traded materials and technology as opposed to areas that were isolated. Draped garments were worn in societies where fabric was produced. The fabric also allowed breathability and enabled the wearer to stay cool. Skins were stitched together to make snug and warmer clothing, which led to tailored clothing. Some regions developed greater skill in developing textiles and spinning yarns. Industrialization introduced changes in dress and ready-to-wear in America. There were changes in dress according to the political system that was prevailing. A good example of this is the dress worn in a democratic system and a monarchy. Clothes are used for a variety of functions. Clothes reflect culturally determined views of social roles. For example, breeches for men and skirts for women. Clothes help designate the age in which they are used. For example, breeching in England during the Renaissance and shorter dresses for young girls. Clothes are used to identify people within a group membership. Clothing is used appropriately for functions. For example, weddings, baptisms, funerals, graduations and patriotic events. Clothes provide status to people. For example, lawyers, police officers, firefighters and postal workers wear uniforms to help in identification of their profession. However, sometimes uniforms can also have functional aspects of protection as well. For example, married women in Western cultures wear a ring on a specified finger. Amish married men wear beards while unmarried men do not. In ancient Rome, only male Roman citizens were permitted to wear the toga. In some cultures, clothing focuses attention on the breasts of women or genitals of men. James Lever, costume historian, phrased the term shifting erogenous zones. Women uncovered different parts of the body selectively in order to attract men. As men became used to seeing more of the breast, this area lost interest and the power to excite and so was covered, while another area such as the hips was emphasized. He also theorized that men in modern society are considered attractive when they appear from their dress to be affluent and successful. To the person who is knowledgeable about a particular culture, dress is a silent language. It tells the observer about the organization of society in which it is worn, as well as the social stratification. It indicates if there are economic classes or a classless society. For example, Ashanti tribesmen of Africa and political leaders of America. The roles of men and women may be distinctly identified by dress. For example, some Islamic countries 
require women to be veiled. The historical context such as the political environment, political conflicts and the economic events also impacts clothes. Examples of the impact of the political environment are Napoleon's ban on imported Kashmir shawls, the revival of Homburg hats by President Eisenhower, and the popularity of Charles Worth after the Empress Eugene began wearing his clothes. War may restrict the access to raw materials or may introduce new innovative materials for the production of cloth. Good examples of this are the adoption of the trench coat after World War I and military tees as sportswear after World War II. Trade is affected by political and economic events. Good examples of this are the depression of the 30s saw a shift from ornate decorative clothing to styles that are more subdued and the opening of silk trade between Rome and China in the first century BC made silk fabric available to wealthy Romans. To summarize, the knowledge gained in this unit will help you understand why humans began using clothes. In the next units, we will discuss in detail about various civilizations and the impact that they had on the development and use of clothes. Thank you.